Hello everyone, it's Jay Carney uh, in the White House in the West Wing joining you for uh, first question. Uh, today I have a few questions that I can answer uh, for you. Uh, the first is from Kurt Davis uh, on Google+. Plus. He asks, what does the president think will happen to gas prices when they remove all existing tax breaks on oil companies, effectively raising taxes on them? Well, this is a good question because the president ad addressed this issue today from the Rose Garden uh, in advance of the Senate's vote on removing billions of dollars of taxpayer subsidies to the oil and gas industry. Um, the fact of the matter is uh, oil and gas companies in America are enjoying record high profits right now because of the very high price of oil. They do not need taxpayer subsidies uh, to create incentives for them to drill for oil and gas. Uh, they have every incentive to drill and explore for oil and gas uh, because of the high price globally of oil. Uh, the billions of dollars that uh, you, the American people, uh, send to the oil and gas companies in the form of subsidies uh, just aren't worth it. They're bad policy and the President believes we should end them. Unfortunately today in the United States Senate, Republicans overwhelmingly voted against ending these subsidies. Uh, and uh, even though a majority of the Senate, almost all of them Democrats, voted to end the subsidies, voted uh, to uh, uh, say no to taxpayer subsidization of the oil and gas companies in 2012, uh, Republicans prevailed and prevented this from passing. Uh, that's a shame. Uh, the President won't give up the fight, though. He'll continue to talk about the need uh, to end these subsidies uh, as a matter of fairness and a matter of good policy. That kind of money should be used to help reduce our deficit and to invest in the kind of alternative energy technologies that are going to be so vital in the 21st century and the development of which will help us become energy independent uh, in, in, in the coming years. Next question comes via Twitter from at Zing. The question is, what would you say if the, uh, is the U.S.'s most important role in foreign policy? Well, that's a good question. I think I would, I would address it two ways. First of all, President Obama, as Commander-in-Chief, has as his number one priority the security of the American people and the security of Americans abroad, including our men and women in uniform. And I think that uh, a fair assessment of his uh, record in foreign policy uh, would uh, reach the conclusion that he has made great strides in pursuing the security of the American people and security of Americans abroad. Our number one threat remains al-Qaeda, and the President's number one priority has been to disrupt, dismantle, and ultimately defeat al-Qaeda, and he's uh, achieved uh, great progress, uh, as has our military and our uh, overall administration in achieving that goal. Secondarily, I think that U.S. leadership around the world, both uh, on national security issues, but global economic issues, global development issues, uh, are, is vital. And, and I think that even in a world where there isn't the bipolar competition between, uh, that we had in the Cold War between the United States and the Soviet Union, uh, the, and, and there are rising, emerging uh, countries like China and India and Brazil, U.S. preeminence, U.S. leadership is more essential than ever. The President, on his trip last fall to Asia, uh, made clear that we, the United States, will remain a major factor in the Pacific, uh, a Pacific power, both militarily and economically, and that leadership was welcomed by countries around the region. Uh, U.S. leadership is essential. Uh, more than any other country's leadership uh, to uh, improving a lot of people around the world and to making sure that American interests are protected around the world. Final question comes from tw uh, Twitter from Sean Jones and he asks, does diplomacy still have a significant chance with Iran? That's a great question. The President has been talking about uh, Iran a lot lately. Uh, obviously there's a great deal of concern and this President has a great deal of concern about uh, the Iranian regime's pursuit of uh, nuclear weapons uh, technology and a nuclear weapon itself. And uh, we have uh, worked, uh, the President has, to unify uh, uh, the international community uh, in isolating and pressuring Iran and, and, and uh, trying to force the Iranian regime to give up its nuclear weapons ambitions and to rejoin the community of nations. The President believes there is still, still time and space to achieve a solution here diplomatically. He takes no option off the table. Uh, but the fact of the matter is uh, we are able to continue to press the, Iran uh, the Iranians, continue to isolate and uh, sanction them uh, with the aim of getting them to change their behavior. Uh, hopefully uh, in the near future we will uh, see a resumption of the so-called P5 plus 1 talks and we will uh, test whether or not uh, the Iranian government, the Iranian leadership is serious about trying to resolve these issues in a way 
uh, that uh, alleviates the international community's concerns about its nuclear ambitions uh, and allows uh, Iran to rejoin the community of nations. The President is deadly serious, though. He is committed to preventing Iran from acquiring a nuclear weapon. Uh, and he has uh, rallied uh, our allies and partners around the world in supporting our policy towards preventing Iran from acquiring a nuclear weapon. That's all I have today for first question. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you again soon.